Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm so happy to be with you this wonderful day. Amen. I'm so happy to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Amen. I cannot help but be happy just to be around where the Lord is. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning to those that are on the line. Good morning to all those on Facebook. And good morning to all those on Zoom and all those on our conference lines. And amen. Glory to God. And all those that might even just hop on in. Amen. Glory to God. We give greetings and honor to God to all of you all over the world of the United States and um, Puerto Rico and Australia and Ethiopia. Amen. Glory to God. And to all those in Europe and amen that will tune in to us. Amen. We appreciate you as well. Amen. Glory to God. We appreciate each and every one of you for just taking the opportunity to to be around us and we appreciate that that god has been that good that he overflows in all the areas good morning and good morning to all the apostles and the bishops and the the mm, pastors and the elders and the elders and the evangelists and the deacons and the deaconesses and look upon the ushers and amen i thank all of them amen for each and every one of you for being around. Amen. I'm excited for what God has been doing and downloading and moving around in us. Amen. Glory to God. But uh, I, I want to get our messages uh, in in the way and in and out the way, as they say, so that I can, um, so that uh, we can bring forth his word. Amen. Glory to God that God has put within us. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, I'm so ready to go. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to turn this part of the service over to our own evangelist lady, Sunshine Strong. Amen. Pay attention to all the details and the things that she has, because I'm sure there's some special events she wants to talk to us about. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Good day, good day, good day to all Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministry family, friends, and first-time visitors. We are the official church without walls. Feeding your faith and down but star. We'd like to invite you to each and every one of our services. And for a list of services, time, and date, we welcome and encourage each and every one of you to visit our website at www.wordofthelamb.org. Monday, we have Bible study. Tuesday and Thursday, we have prayer on the prayer line where we will pray for you and with you. Every other Wednesday, we have a book club fellowship. We welcome you for the book we're reading and the dates. You can move you on down to the website and you're going to find some fantastic information. And once a month, we have the men's and women's ministry on a Wednesday. We have upcoming a Father's Day event, a woman slash Mother's Day event, and so much more. Check out the Facebook page for the flyers and all of the invitations that you can spread and invite a friend. Every Friday, we have Friday Encouraging Words, where many times we have guest speakers, preachers. We have Bible trivia, poetry night. You never know what's going to happen on Friday Encouraging Words, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. So come on out and don't be a part of the I Should Have Been There Club. Also, we have first group prayer every first Saturday of the month between the hours of 12 and 1 p.m., giving God the first fruit that belongs to Him. And every Sunday, you get it right here live on Facebook, Zoom, the conference line, and your favorite social media. It is Sunday Message with our own beloved pastor, Brian Bryant bringing the word of God to the people of God for such a time as this. And we have our littlest precious treasures, our little lambs, church for boys and girls, at 10 a.m. every Sunday. 10 a.m. every Sunday, Little Lambs Church. Why don't you bring 
you're a little lamb to learn about the great lamb of god again little lambs church is at 10 a.m and all the little lambs get to see one another and we do not live stream the little lamb and we just really enjoy the opportunity just to listen to what god puts in little children and remember jesus loves the little children also, we'd like to invite you weekly, daily, Monday through Friday. Unity prayer continues stronger than ever. Monday through Friday, pick a time that is just your time for you and Jesus. And make a touchdown on your Jesus zone. Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. Join us and let's pray for a global community. And again, we have more things happening. We have upcoming events. We'd like for you to pay attention to your Facebook. It's going to be wonderful that you can participate and not just be a spectator, but equally participate because you make a difference. One man makes a difference. Jesus did. So we welcome you again to Word of the Lamp. And we do have other announcements that will be done for the end of our program. We thank you for joining us. And we thank you for the emojis and spreading the word through gospel. You could make a difference. Just do it. Thank you again. And we turn these services over to our own beloved, Pastor Brian. Amen. Glory to God. I like to mention, amen, that we do have multiple ways in case you desire to want to bless this ministry, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, if it's been a blessing to you in any particular way, amen, on your screen you'll see, amen, a, a, a QR code for a, a PayPal and a, our, our QR code for uh, the Cash App and amen. We even have text to give, amen. And if you have new to text to give, it's one of those things where you do a couple of things through the text one time. And after that, it becomes so easy. All you do is text with the amount that you want to give and it automatically goes there. It's a wonderful thing. And if you're one individual who likes to just send some things through the regular mail, amen. If you notice, we have our own uh, P.O. box right here. Where did the lamb Worldwide Ministries, P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. And please um, feel free to to even just drop a hello. Uh, say hello to us if you like. You can also go up on our website at www.wordofthelamb.org. Amen. And everything that we have upon our landing page, go scroll down to the bottom. You'll see all of the information that you need. Amen. For all the information that you need for all of our services are at the top and for the new events and things that are going on this there as well. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to take the opportunity just to invite you that April 19th, 20th and 21st. Amen. There will be a revival. Amen. A three-day revival. Amen. That I at New Holy Word in Meriden, Connecticut. Amen. Come on out and 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 be a part of it. I have been asked to be the revivalist. So, Amen. Come on out and be with us. Amen. Glory to God and hear what God has to say upon those days: the nineteenth, the twentieth, and the twenty-first. And I also want you to mark mark down on your calendars on May nineteenth. The women of Word of the Lamb, uh, the women of distinction, uh, sisters with praise, amen. They're going to uh, have an event on May 19th. Come on out and support them, amen. Glory to God. You'll be surprised at what's going to occur and happen. And amen, it's going to be a Holy Ghost good time. I already know last year's was wonderful. I can't wait for this year. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With that being said, amen, I just wanted to say amen, amen, and amen. I wanted just to catch you up on those couple of things, amen, so that you can mark them down on your calendar. Now I'm going to ask you one quick question that I hope you have the answer to. 
Do you have your sword with you? Amen. Amen. For those that do not know, the sword Amen. is the word of God. Hallelujah. For those that are on the line with us. Amen. Oh, by the way, I got to say this. Sister Miller's on the line. So, you know, I'm ready to preach this morning. And I got to say good morning to Sister Shaylin and Sister Bridget. Amen. They both on the line. And amen. I'm ready to, 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 to go. Amen. Glory to God. I'm I'm looking for somebody to push me through today. I don't have much before it because I know God is moving. Amen. But I do got something for you. Amen. Today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we want to bring forth a word for you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now that it's subject to change. Amen. Glory to God. But we're going to be flowing by what the Holy Ghost has to say. Amen. But I was glad when they said to me, let's come into the house of the Lord, O Jerusalem. Our feet have been standing by the gates. Oh, a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. God, surely goodness and mercy, hallelujah, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen, glory to God. Giving honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. To the pastors that will be listening, to the apostles, to the elders, to the eldresses, the deacons, the deaconesses, the evangelists, hallelujah, the ushers, the reverends, the people of God all over. With the highest regard and intellectual integrity, I sit before you this morning, amen, to expound and share with you the Rama of the logo, meaning the written and spoken word of God. Amen. I was in a place today uh, where I was sitting around and I felt like I didn't have anything to do because I could only write just a little bit. And God told me to hold up and just write a little bit. And um, I don't know exactly where the Lord was taking me, amen. And I explained that this morning to somebody and they said, well, God's going to make it so that it all ties in because that's how he does. So I was sitting there and I was like, Lord, I I, I got a, a subject and I, I got a things, God, but I kind of just need you to guide me through today because, you know, I know this message must be for me. Amen. Glory to God. I think that y'all might just be listening in today, but this message is for me. Glory to God. But the moment that it seems like the message may be for you, I need you to tell me this message is for me. Glory to God. Can you do that for me? Amen. Amen. The, the the word that came to me, amen. God bless you. God bless you. I hear Sister Shereen in the house, amen. Hallelujah to God, hallelujah. Sister Sunshine in the house, amen. Avenger the Sunshine in the house, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Y'all pray for me, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all put some, I feel y'all prayers coming through. Amen. Glory to God. And I, I'm starting to get the exciting feeling of knowing that the, it's there because we say where two or more gathered, there shall he be also. Ha. Glory to the name of Jesus. My subject for you today is it's just as simple. Right? Don't lose focus. The subject, once again, is don't lose focus. Now, when I wrote these things down, I was in the midst of losing some focus. 
And the Lord told me, don't lose focus. So in the midst of this looking at it, I, I brought myself to Webster. You know, Webster Dictionary is one of my favorite dictionaries that I love to go to. So I went to Webster and I asked Webster, I said, uh, the, I want to know about uh, the word focus. And I got a lot of meanings, but one that pulled out and stand it out to me was the word focus means a state or condition permitting clear perception or understanding. Permitting clear perception or understanding. So then I put it into my mindset to say that when we lose focus, we don't have that clear perception or that clear understanding. And I thought about when we do lose focus that we get distracted and we sometimes get distracted so easily. Some of us are distracted right at this moment. Hmm. It is the easiest thing to do, amen, uh, in, in certain places, amen. And if you're in church, you might be distracted by the people around you. If you're a church without walls, you might be distracted by the things around you. And amen. That's why they always come up with a, a announcement that uh, place all your phones and, and on vibrate. And they used to tell you at one time, I'm give, telling my age, but they used to tell you to put your beepers on silence, <laughs> you know. They used to tell you these things because they knew that there will be distractions. Amen. See, we lose focus so easy in life, amen. Uh, we've been through a lot of things and we try to multitask a lot of times. And while we multitask and we're doing one thing, but we're forgetting about another, amen, and glory to God. And we try to put as much effort into one thing as we put into the other. And sometimes something has to suffer. See, I, I um, started to understand that we are attracted to all that we see. You know, we look around and we're looking at things and I can actually look in the sky and see something and all of a sudden something else comes by and you look at it and, oh boy, look at that pretty color over here. Oh, Lord, listen to those words over there. Oh, that's my favorite song on this side. Oh, I know that song. My telephone just rang. ring a ling a ling you're and you're distracted from what you're doing. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. How many times has it been that you've been distracted while you were trying to read the word? Mm-hmm. You know, your dog want to go out. <laughs> your best friend call. Your, you know, people you ain't seen in a while want you to ride with them. Uh, um, for some strange reason, it, everybody wants you to do something right at this particular time. You uh, think about some other things that pop on. Oh, and my very, very favorite, that when I start to read the Bible, the movie or the TV show or the sports that I like, Always seem to pop right on. How we have it so that a lot of us don't open up a Bible. It's on our, our computers, on our phones. And we start off reading the Bible scripture and end up looking at what's on Facebook and the news and whatever else and whatever sale that might be going on. And now you're distracted from the word. I know that ain't happening to none of y'all. You know, you ain't got to say that. I, it only happened to me. It ain't happening to none of y'all, right? Ain't none of that ever happened to you. Amen. Glory to God. But it happens to me. I, I'm, I, 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 I think I'm talking to myself. You know? And, um, I'm going to say that again. I think I'm talking to myself. 
um I, I I I see on 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 Facebook, I I hear I hear on Facebook and I I hear on the conference line that I'm not talking to myself, but um I feel a little a little 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 bit something, but I I I'm looking to know if I'm talking to myself. If it hasn't, none of these has never uh, uh bothered you. Then I guess you can't say this isn't. A, it ain't about me. It's just, it's about what's going on with you and and uh, all of these things of that nature. But how many times have you been on this line, hey, Amen. Come on, I want to talk with you just a little bit, and something pulled you and distracted you from what you're doing, hey, Amen. You might have mm -hmm. even been at work, hey, Amen, and something distracted you from finishing your work. Hey. Something might have pulled you away, hey, Amen, from what you were doing on the opposite side, hey, Amen. Sometimes you might have been able to do something, writing something down, had a thought in your mindset, and someone came and distracted you, and you lost your train of thought happens to all of us you uh, uh know that if i was throwing a baseball at you you wouldn't lose your train of thought no matter what was happening because you've seen what's coming at you and if you lose your train of thought and turn your head you might get hit that's right but the enemy is hoping that you lose your train of thought so he can hit you oh mm -mm -mm. Oh, I, I, I know a subject to change. Hey, hey Amen. I, I wasn't planning to go in this direction, but you see, God said that uh, uh, you lose your train of thought sometimes and walk right into the wall. Have you ever seen somebody walk into a piece of glass because they wasn't looking where they was going? Uh, how many times has somebody ran into you because they was looking down at something but not looking at where they was going? They lost their focus on what they were doing and distracted by what was there. How many times have you heard that people got into the accidents because they were over there texting on their phone instead of looking up at the lights and looking up on a street line. Amen. Oh, how many times have you heard about people going in the wrong direction because they were focused on something else and not focused on the sign that said wrong way? Yes. God has also gave you those same signs in your life and told you that you're walking in the wrong direction sometimes, but yet we still don't even want to hear about it. We're focused on what we're doing. Some of us are so focused on where we're going that we forgot to look at how we're getting there. Hmm. See, the Bible tells us in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, but first you seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Don't lose focus. See, because when you lose focus, that means that you might be losing your focus off of what God has to it. Because remember, he's right there in the center, as he say, in the middle. He is everything. He's your beginning part. That is what you're looking for. And he's, he's where you want to start and he's where you want to end. But somehow in our lifetime, we have lost focus in certain things. We have lost focus in what we're doing. We have lost focus in, 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 in our people. We have lost focus in our humanity. We have lost focus in what we're doing. We have lost focus in the word of God. We have lost focus. For some of us, it's harder right now in the name of Jesus to sit up there and say and sit down for one hour and listen to the word of God than to turn on the television and watch a movie that you've been watching for two hours that you know that you've seen 10 times. Your focus is on what's going to pleasure your mind instead of learning what's going to pleasure your soul. Well, I'm talking about myself here. Yeah. See, the Bible says in, in here that we need to continue to stay something. It also says in Colossians 3rd and 2, and I'm talking from the English Standard Version. I'll be using the King James Version a little later on. Amen. If you desire, you can park it right there at Luke 17 and stay in that direction. Amen. Glory to God. It says, but set your mind on things above and not the things that are on the earth. 
Amen. Glory to God. A lot of times in our lives, we have found ourselves losing focus for what we're doing. It became more of a chore to you than doing it out of the joy that was there supposed to be in your heart. Can you hear me? Focus on the words that are coming out of my mouth. Somebody is surfing Facebook right now. And maybe they found us. And because they found us, maybe they'll connect themselves and know that they're getting ready to stay in focus and not be out of focus. For those who wear glasses, amen. Glory to God. Even though you can still see with your glasses, everything becomes right into what? Focus. And with those that wear glasses, amen, glory to God, sometimes you have to squint or maybe you have to open your eyes or even stand back to see certain things because even though you see it, you still want to be able to see it, what? More clearly. But you can't see something more clearly when you're out of focus. Is that right? If you don't have your glasses on, you can't see something correctly as you want to if you're the ones who wear glasses. Amen. If you wear glasses to read something up close, that means you got to put them on to read something up close. If you needed to see something far away, you needed to see it far away. Some of us right now, when we if we think about it, when we was younger and we know we might have needed glasses, would have been happier if we put on glasses because now once you put Put the glasses on you would have seen what you was getting into amen god is trying to focus us because he's the lens he's the glasses that we need to put us into an area where we need to be so that we can focus on him and focus on the things around us so that you can see what is pulling you astray so that you'll be able to focus on it and let it know that i am getting ready to cut the roots but I can't cut the roots of something because I'm out of focus on it and I'm not tuned into it. And now instead of being tuned into every particular thing that the Lord is saying, I'm tuned into a word or two every once in a while. Or there's some of us right now who could talk about how they remember how they used to read their Bible every day, and yet they still haven't picked it up in such a while. Some of us haven't pulled on their Bibles and they got dust upon it. Amen. Glory to God. Some of us remember that they have the, the Bible app, but haven't pressed the button. Amen. Glory to God. Some of us right now have opened up the Bible only because it's Sunday. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. But yet Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, they haven't opened it up and they haven't seen it because they lost their focus their focus is on the world your focus is re in the wrong place you got your focus on something else but it should be on the lord see we understand that you're being distracted the enemy's job is to distract you the enemy's job is to do a lot more than that he's made more than just to distract you but he knows that if i push you in this distraction i can't just stop you from getting to where you're going but i surely can put you on delay how many y'all are in the delay mode right now how many y'all are feeling like y'all might have been delayed well i'm here right now to tell you that your delay time is about to be over Hmm. I'm here to let you know right now that your focus is getting ready to go into the right direction. Amen. I'm here to let you know that you're getting ready to move out of an area of where it is because what was trying to hinder you before, you now can see what the hindrance is. So now that you can see what the hindrance is, you know exactly how to dig the root up. Amen. Oh my God, you couldn't see where to where to put the screw at because it was dark. But yet when somebody put a flashlight and showed the whole flashlight, you could see where the screw was. And all of a sudden you picked the screw up and put it back into place. And now what used to be wobbly is now strong. Yes. Oh, we lost some stuff along the way yes we have we have lost some some things we lost some people we lost uh, some stuff amen we even had some feelings lost we even had some feelings hurt along the way amen but nothing's to stop you from losing focus on the lord 
Nothing should stop you from losing focus on Lord Jesus. And here's the thing. I know that it comes tough, but yet we still have to walk in that particular way because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Oh, this is far away from the message that I, I decided to, to give to you, amen. But God told me it was subject to change, amen. So I'm gonna let the subject change. The Holy Ghost will move and let him do what he's gonna do. Amen, glory to God in the name of Jesus because we need to stay focused on some areas. There's some areas in our lives that we, we put up there and said we can't. Oh my God, the first word that came out there that causes you to be unfocused is the word, I can't do it. Yes. I don't think. Mm. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself today, Deacon. I'm talking to myself today, Evangelist. I'm talking to myself today, Sister Shereen. I'm talking to myself, Sister Miller. I'm talking to myself, Sister Gaddy. I know y'all talking to me, but I'm talking to myself. Mm hmm. See, the Bible tells us uh, to stay focused. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a whole lens, amen. If you were to hold the whole Bible up in front of your eyes, you'd be able to see a whole lot better. Oh, man, God, you say, how can that be, Pastor? These words are going to block my eyes, but it will put your eyes into the place where God has desired it to be so that you might be able to read the word because, oh, my God, hallelujah. I'm going to read this so that you'll get an understanding of where I'm coming from. Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 22nd verse. I'm reading from the English Standard Version as well. It says, the eye is the lamp of the body. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to say it again. The eye is the lamp of the body. I'm going to finish this particular thing. So if your eye is healthy, oh my God. Come on now. I want you to stop right there. Your eye is the lamp of your body. Right. What you see and you hear. Amen. Glory to God. Those are your lamps. Amen. And your eye is healthy. Your whole body will be full of light. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 6 and 22. Look it up for yourself. Hope you're looking it up. You're supposed to look up the words. It's right with me. Y'all with me? Y'all going to stay with me, right? Amen. All right. All right. So if the light, if the eye is the light, of, is, the, is the lamp of your body. Oh man, that means that it, we, we, what we what we take it in, what we what we take in, what we hear in, Amen, keeps us focused on the word. For those who have difficulty in certain areas, he gives you another lamp, and he still makes it so that you will stay focused on him. Matter of fact. Some people's focus is on him so much more than ours. We lose focus because of some distractions that come our way. And nine times out of 10, distractions are something that makes you interested. You know, if you like fast cars, you might see fast cars. If you like certain music that might music might pop up you might have a sentimental feeling about a, a a certain book or or a certain thing it might be work you might be one of the people who like to work a lot whatever those distraction is that's stopping you from spending time the stopping you from focusing on the lord and all I keep hearing and all I keep saying is you keep getting distracted. You're distracted from what you're hearing. You're distracted from what you're seeing. People turn on their televisions and their radios and they're distracted from all these particular things. And we spend a long time and a lot of time, most of us, not can't say all of us, but we spend a lot of time doing so many things that we like to do. And we spend the short of minutes, part of time spending the things of God. You got to learn to stay focused. Talking to myself. See, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Stay focused. 
But when you lose focus, you will slip, trip, and fall. You might have lost focus in your life when you were younger. I don't have to go there. I'm going to the club. I don't need to do this. I'm going over here. I don't need to do this because I don't want to be bothered with the people. Where's your focus on the Lord? Being off focus can cause you to go way off track. Get yourself into something that you cannot, <laughs> and you, or you, let's put it this way, you don't want to be a part of. And when you finally realize it, it takes you a long time. It's a big fight with your mind, your soul, and your body to find your focus again. You know, it's sometimes hard to tell some people some things, amen. My examples is this. How many times have people called you in the middle of things that you're getting ready to do when you know that you're in the middle of something, yet they want to have a conversation with you? And sometimes you have to say to them, listen, I got to call you back because I got such and such to do, or I got, I got such and such to do, or I'm I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to service, but after service, I could talk to you, you know? How many times have you heard that I really need to talk with you and when you got an opportunity to talk to you, I'm not saying all the time, just saying sometimes. You get ready to talk to them and it's something that you could be held up and waiting and you put the thing that you were trying to do on hold because you figured that they really needed your help to hear, to hear what's going on and it might not have been any of those things. You know, because the enemy uses the people around you to distract you. Amen. See, the word tells us in John 10 and 10, the thief comes not but to, st for, to steal and to kill and to destroy. I'm reading from the King James Version. That's what the thief comes not to do, but he comes but to just do just that. He wants to steal your attention. He wants to kill your focus. He wants to destroy your desire to be with the Lord. But Jesus said, I come, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I come to get you back on focus, to protect you for letting him kill your desires, for letting him trying to take you into a direction that is not there. Focus on me. Luke 17, in the King James Version. I hope that you are have your books there, amen, glory to God. This is Jesus speaking, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. I need you to stay focused. And it says this thus, then said his disciples, it's impossible, but, but the offense will come, but woe unto them who they come. It is better for him who have a mild millstone that were hanging around his neck and cast into the sea then that he should offend one of the little ones. Stay focused. Then take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he, and if his trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you have the faith, you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, 
you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and thou plant it in the sea and it should obey thee. Understand that this particular tree has roots that cannot hardly be moved. Oh, God's trying to tell you to stay focused. If you stay focused on the Lord, the things, the problems, the issues, the things that are, that are on you will start to move away because you're speak them out of your existence and then put him in place of it. Oh, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Oh, you got to stay focused on what you're doing. Amen. Glory to God. And but which of you having a servant plowing in or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet? Hmm? And will not you rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird myself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Does he think the servant because he has did the things that were commanded of him i trow not so likewise ye when ye shall have done all these things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants we have done that which is our duty to do stay focused Stay focused on the fact that the things that you're doing, amen, glory to God, some of the things you're doing are just because it is your reasonable service. Well, I'm talking to myself. See, I need you to stay focused on some things because every once in a while, we have to understand that even in the midst of, of forgiveness, we got to stay focused. In the midst of service, we got to stay focused. And the Bible continues to say in verse 11, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go. Show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Stay focused. You stay focused because even in the midst of your sicknesses, God will continue to heal you if you will stay focused on it. The men of the men of that was standing far off, he said, Go. And they turned around and went. Before they were even healed, they went to go show the priest because they had told them they went by the obedience of what he had said. Because he focused on what the Lord had told them to do. The Lord said, go and show to the priest. And they started to walk. The part that I want you to catch is that the Samaritan, which is someone totally different, amen, glory to God, an outsider stopped and turned around and gave God some glory. And Jesus answering him said, where were not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. The one person that turned around realized something that the others didn't even realize. As they were going to go to the priest because the priest had to tell and pronounce them as cleansed. The Samaritan turned around and gave glory to God because he had already seen the priest. He was staying focused on being in the word of God. 
Or what do I mean? I'm talking about he was looking at the high priest called Jesus. Glory to God. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Oh, yes, the high priest had to announce that they were cleansed. And so he told them to go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Stay focused on what God is doing in and around you. We lose focus on some things because of the problems and the troubles that are going on. Maybe your forgiveness, maybe your service, maybe your gratitude. Maybe all those things have allowed you to go off of focus and you forgot that you should be focusing on the Lord. Well, what I usually mean by that is I mean that sometimes we're trying it our own way. I'm going to do it my way. Well, I'm, uh, I know I'm not making an important announcement to you. I know that some of y'all done tuned on off already. I know that some of us done dropped off the line. I've seen that some of us already had to already turn the television. Hey, Amen. Somebody's already facing on Facebook looking in a different way. Somebody done put me on mute so they can have another conversation. I know that those particular things, but if you didn't stay focused, that's all right. You don't have to be focused. I'm talking to myself. And he said to him, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And when he had demanded of the Pharisees and when the kingdom of God had come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they low here or low there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Uh-oh. Church without walls. Amen. If the kingdom of God is within you and you lose focus, what's going on with you? Hallelujah. And he said unto the disciples, the day will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you shall not see it. And they say, shall say to you, I see or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. They're trying to get you off of focus. As for as the lightning that lighteth out one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Oh, you have to understand that your focus is not upon this world, but it is focusing on the word of God and the and being where God is. Oh, our focus is that we want to get to heaven. Or you might be focusing on your thing in a lower part saying to yourself, I just want to make it through the next hour. Oh, I'm not going to even proclaim that. I'm going to say I'm going to make it until God calls me home. And whatever time that may be, amen, glory to God, that's going to be the time. But I'm not putting any stamp upon my mindset, my heart, my soul. Somebody right now is saying, I'm hoping that he finishes soon. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But first, we must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Stay focused. Likewise, also. It was in the days of Lot that they did eat, they did drink, and they did brought, they sold their plants, their builds. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. You have to stay focused 
on the word of God. Sometimes the Lord will pull you out of places, people of God. Sometimes he will move you in the different directions. And every while, once in a while, when you are hard-headed, he got to send some angelical things to come and snatch you out. Amen. It happened a lot. Amen. Because you had lost focus. And he wanted you to keep you in focus. You got to remember the enemy wants to knock you out of focus so badly. He wants to hurt you so badly. He wants to destroy you so badly. In verse 30 says this, even thus said shall in the days that the son of man is revealed in the day which he shall be upon the housetops and his stuff in the house, let him not come down or take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return. Remember his lot's wife. Amen. Glory to God. When God pulls you out of a situation, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. When God pulls you out of a situation, y'all, you know, don't try to go back where you were. Well, he didn't pull me out of here. I could continue on. No, he didn't pull you out of here for you to continue on. He pulled you out of there because where you was going wasn't continued to be right. Sometimes while you were over there, you lost focus and you stepped over there off the line. Amen. Get back on the line. For some of y'all who know, get back on the island. Glory to God. Whosoever shall seek his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall revere it, preserve it. I think in my mindset that I desire to do what Christ wants me to do. But I lose focus, y'all trying to do the things that I think he wants to do. See, I lose focus when I'm reading the word of God and the phone rings. I lose focus when I'm reading or praying and uh, something else pops in the head, amen. Or when I'm researching something in uh, a scripture that I'm looking at and uh, I'm online and something else pulls my attention. See, we lose focus in so many ways because our mindsets aren't there. That's why even church services have become shorter because people have a shorter attention span the enemy has got us to the point where we lose focus on these things but we'll spend most of our time in things that are not of god or well, there's nothing wrong with watching your movies and watching your television and your radio amen but as much time as you're going to give to those things you should also take the opportunity in my own, this is my own opinion, amen, to do something in God. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, you always tell somebody and your children and your people that are around you that you have to have a balanced meal. Amen. They tell you that you need to have your, your bread and your milk and your cereals and your fruit and your toast or whatever you need to make your meals balanced so that you'll have a little bit of everything that you need but did you know that everything that you need is in the house did you know that everything that you're looking for is focusing through god because he said i will supply all of your needs 
according to his riches and glory. He will give you the wisdom to know exactly what you have. Yeah, you can have a little bit of that. You can have a little bit of this. But if you put my, my focus in first, you'll realize that everything else around you will start to get in. And you will. And if I put my mindset upon God, they say, oh, I put my mind on God. That means I'm focusing on him. And if I'm focusing on God, that means I'm moving in his direction. But every once in a while, we lose focus, amen, and see something else catches our attention, that shiny little penny. And we look at the shiny little penny. Penny, and it brings us off course. Well, I'm talking to somebody today because I just want to let you know that you might be off course. Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit because I'm almost done with what I'm reading. Amen. Pay attention to this. It said, whosoever shall seek his life shall, shall, shall seek, seek to save his life shall lose it. Amen. And those who whoever lose his life shall preserve it i tell you in the night there shall be two men in one bed and one shall be taken and the other shall be left i pray that you be ready you know two women shall be grinding together one shall be taken the other one left one stayed focused on the lord one didn't stay focused Two men shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Hmm. One stayed focused on the Lord. One did. And they answered and they, they answered and said unto him, where Lord? And he said unto them, whoso, wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together glory to god there are the people who are going to stay focused they're going to be with the lord they're going to be the ones who are not below not be focused and they'll be left behind the lord wants you to focus on him because there's some things that he wants to do in your life. There's some areas that people have told you no. But God has said that I'm setting you up. That even the no is going to be okay. There's some times in our lives, amen. That we have walked upon some particular places. And we have lost focus on what we should be doing. And we found ourselves running with the rest of the crowd. But the time is right now. That there's every once in a while, while we're running in the crowd, there's that one person running in the opposite direction. And they ran right into you. And they just touched you and told you to focus. And when you focus, you realize that you were running in the wrong direction. And that I should be running toward Jesus. See, the enemy wants to move you away. He is going to use everything, including yourself. Oh, there's going to be people right in the moment who's going to say, I don't get anything about this message. It didn't have nothing to do with me. And I'm still focused, but yet you still might be unfocused somewhere in your life. If you make yourself an open book, amen, glory to God you'll be able to take a good look. Some of the places that you are, you might not be able to, to like and to see. Can we do all do a better job? Yeah. My problem that I have with my own self is that we like to do a better job, but we lose focus. So we have to go against the things that are trying to cause us to lose focus so that we can move upon the things of the Lord. My thoughts and desires for you today is that you won't lose focus. You won't lose focus on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody today has been writing books 
and just put it off to the side because they thought that they would get to it sooner or later. Well, the time is now to finish doing what you're doing. You have a lot more to your story to add. Not saying that you should finish it, but I think that there's a lot more that you need to add to it. Somebody at this moment, amen, is thinking about their children. We all have that ability to do that. We know the state that they're in. We know the state that we want them to be in. And we the state that we pray that they're not in. Stay focused on who you are. Sometimes it's not easy to be in a certain things and be the only one in the household. I don't know who am I talking to. Hallelujah. But it's hard to be the only one in the household being and walking in the word of God. But understand that I need you to continue to stay focused because your staying focused is causing others, hallelujah, to slowly walk into that area. And believe me, every day will get better. But let the wisdom of the Lord guide you into the places that you need to be. Someone has desired to go to church but the person that they're with is moving in a different direction and they lost their focus into being with them because they're afraid of the argument. They're afraid of the problems that they're going to go through. But if you put God in the center, everything else will work its way out. Amen. Glory to God. And I say this with the ultimate thing that either somebody's going to conform or they're going to have to go. But when you put the Lord first, that means the Lord is first in everything. Oh, he's first before your children. Mm -hmm. He's first before your spouse. Mm -hmm. He's first before you. Mm -hmm. You put him in the midst of it. And all the other things will start to come together. Because you put your foundation is built. And that your foundation is built on Christ Jesus, the solid rock. Oh, there's times in our lives that we've lost focus in every area of our lives. Some of us have lost focus today. They've been out here so long that they don't know the truth from a lie. They even might be speaking the truth in a lie. Some of us have been hurt so much that our distractions have hurt us so much that we, we, we want to stay away from anything that's going to cause us so much pain. And one of the tricks of the enemy is to let you know that some things that are, are, are through God is going to cause you a lot of pain. Some of us have been fighting for many years to get through and get through some things. And it keeps showing its ugly head every single time. But today, the Lord has gave me this for you. This one part of it says, resist the devil. And he will flee. The reason why I'm giving you that is because resisting does not mean to take it. It means to push back. People of God. Don't lose focus on the Lord. I want you to have this thought in your mindset. What if. The Lord lost focus on you. Where would you be? If there's anyone on this line who has lost focus and they said to themselves, 
I'm tired of doing the things that I've been doing. And I desire to want to know Christ for myself. I want to be focused in on him completely. I'm tired of playing the in and out game. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I know I'm not done. Some of us have been in that particular area. We're halfway in and we're halfway out. You got to make a choice. Whether you want to step in or step out. That's your choice, not mine. But the choice that you make, I need you to get an understanding. If you're all in with the Lord, he's going to be all in because he's going to be all in with you. But if you desire to be out on the Lord, then step on out on the Lord. But amen, remember, one will be taken and one will be left. Amen, glory to God. I, 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 I'm I, going to let you know that the ones that are left are, are not going to be going to heaven. Amen. They might have an opportunity, amen, at that moment to do something. They might be able to repent, amen, before, before God comes down. Hmm, I'm going to say that. You might have a chance to repent before God comes down because it's never too late. But on that one time, it's never too late because we know that even on the cross, it was never too late. But what we need you to get an understanding is you have to pick something. Where are you going to put your focus at? Focus on the Lord. He will lead you through. He will bring you through everything and every event. People of God, if you are called and said, I'm tired of doing what I've been doing, I'm going to say it again. If you're tired of doing what you've been doing, Oh, I'm going to say it one more time, y'all. If you're tired of doing what you've been doing, well, even though you think that it's working, it's still not moving the way that you know that it will move in God. If you said, I want to try the Lord for myself. See, I'm going to give you a slight guarantee that if you would try God for yourself, you'll never be the same. Or oh, if you desire to be saved. We ask you, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Understand that we can't save you. Only Jesus can. But we can point you in the right direction. We can give you the right information. We can walk you while you're walking your path to help you along your way. If you desire to be saved, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? If you're on Facebook and you desire to be saved, call 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. I'm sure you'll see it on the screen soon. If you're on the conference line and you're desiring to be saved, let us know we hear you. If you're on Zoom and you desire to be saved, let us know and we hear you. If you desire to be saved and yet you want to be able just to have a conversation with us, then you can reach us at word of the lamb at outlook.com. Send us an email. Amen. Glory to God. And also while you're sending an email, make sure you give us your name and how we can reach you, amen. For those who have dropped the ball, because we all have dropped the ball, i.e., when I say drop the ball, that means you lost focus. I used to be able to do this, but I substituted something else that is not of God into his place, lost focus on him. You know, those spots when you 
desire to do something, but you put it aside and then you put it aside and now it becomes easier that you can dismiss it instead of going to it. If any of those things have happened, if you lost the focus in any particular way, I ask you that you would pray with me. Most heavenly and kind Father, we come before you as humble as we know how, Lord. We are repent for each and everything that we have done, every action, every word, every display, every eye roll, every attitude. Lord, we put all of those things before you, Father God, and ask you for forgiveness. We know, Father God, that the anointing that we had, the anointing that we were in, wasn't enough to keep us for this time. But Lord, we desire a new anointing as we desire to be new creatures. Now, Father, I'm asking you that you will not only forgive us, but try us one more time. That we'll be able to do what you desire to do that we will keep our focus on you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and humble name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For those, amen. hallelujah. Hey, that, that, oh, oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt the shift in the atmosphere. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. There's liberty and freedom. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. For those, as we say in, I hope I'm saying this right, evangelist outlaw, that are looking for a church home. Amen. Amen. I I I I I want to say to you that this is a wonderful place to be in service. Amen. Glory to God. We are a church without walk. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We might not be in that traditional building, but we know that the church is you. Amen. Glory to God. And we want to be, if you desire, that this is a place where you think that you might like to fellowship with a little bit longer. First and foremost, we always ask you to do something for us, and that is read on our website what we believe in, amen, and see is that something that you will agree with. We also ask you that in every place that you desire to be with, to fellowship with, that you will read what they believe in as well, so that you would have an understanding of what it is. For those who have read it or those who have Cruise through it and said to themselves that I desire to be a member and I desire to fellowship with you even more. The doors of the church are open. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? You see, I don't want you... Uh, to think about it as pressure, amen. For everybody has to make it inform a, a very good decision of where they want to be. But wherever you go, oh, I hope that the Lord thy God is always with you. Amen. Glory to God. For those that are thinking and wanting to have a conversation and if you or if you desire you know on facebook and you desire that you want to need a church home or even desire to be saved you can give us a call at 1-302-202-1110 use conference code 940-792 amen glory to god we'll be here for those particular things as well and a few more Every once in a while, there's people who will come upon us right now. And while they're there, 
They say that this is a place I like to fellowship for a while. Even though I have a church home, I want to be able to fellowship with you because I have not been to my home church in a while. Amen. We can keep you on watch. Amen. That means we'll watch out for your soul. You will have the opportunity to do the things that you normally could do in your church. Amen. Glory to God. And we can do the things that are necessary. And while you are here, we will keep up with you and talk with you and, and make sure that everything is right with you. And oh, by the way, there's been a few who have desired to be on watch and found themselves as members. Amen. It happens. Amen. And glory to God for that. But if you desire to be on watch, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, glory to God. I have done what you've asked me to. But Lord, I have to put the invitation of prayer out. That if anyone who's desiring prayer, if you're on Facebook, our conference line will be open at 1302-202-110. Use conference code 940792, as you see on the screen, by our Facebook technicians. Amen. Glory to God. If you're desiring for prayer and you're on Zoom, amen, just hold on and be with us. If you are just desiring to have a conversation and fellowship with us and you're already on Facebook, come on over after the end of service and dial 1302-202-111110. Use conference code 940792 and you can just say hello to us. We can speak to each other and fellowship with each other. Amen. It's good just to do that as well. Amen. With that being said, and I believe that I, our minds and hearts are clear. Amen. I'm going to ask that our hearts and minds are clear. For Amen. This Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, most heavenly and kind Father, we come before you right now, God, asking you, Father, that we have done everything that you have asked us to do. We have brought forth a word, Father God, for us to stay focused. Lord, I ask right now for those who desire to be saved. We, we called on those who had dropped the ball, Father God. We opened up the doors of the church, Father God. Hallelujah. We even opened up for those who desire to be on watch. Father, we even sent an invitation for those who desire prayer and that we will be praying for in a few minutes. Lord, we thank you for these particular things. And we have done what you have asked us to do. Now, Father, I'm asking you that you will bless in every area. I ask you that you would overflow in every direction. Father, whatever word that was brought into their hearts, Father God, I ask that it will carry them until the next time. Lord, may the Lord watch between me and thee why we are absent one from another. Pray from each other in Jesus' mighty and humble name. Amen. Amen and amen. For those that are on the Facebook, I want to say God bless you to Sister Miller and Sister Bridget and Sister Morales. And if you want to come on the other side and just say hello to us, we appreciate that too. 1-302-202-1110 and use conference code 940792. We love to just hear your voice today. Amen. And we give love and honor to each and every one of you. Amen. I love you all. And those that are on Facebook, amen, that I do not know. 
Amen. You're still my brothers and sisters in Christ. You stay well and let God continue to move upon you. And remember, stay focused on him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are truly dismissed. For those that are on Facebook, you are dismissed. For those